Okay, this little video is on two of the great puzzles of our time about our universe. Okay, the two puzzles, they're sort of question marks. We don't know what they are, although we may be making some progress here. One is called dark matter, and one is called dark energy. They're not the same thing. They kind of sound like the same thing, but they're different. To give you a taste of what those are. Let's go back and make sure you're clear on this expansion of the universe idea. At least, well, let's give it a shot, okay? Last video we said uh, we thought of four galaxies, A, B, C, and D. We were B. All separated by the same distance, just as an example to get the point across, right? Okay, we said if a and C are the same distance apart, then as the space-time expands, they will move away the same amount, say an inch or so, and then C moves away. So now A and C have moved away. If D doesn't move, it'll stay the same distance it was. So this is the same distance it was, it just kind of moved with C, along with C. I'm saying that the, the space between C and D isn't expanding. But we know that it does. Since C and D are the same distance as B and C, and the same distance as A and B, then D will move away from C. It won't be the same distance, but it will move away that same amount, say an inch. So between C and D, well from C, D has moved away. The same amount as C moved away from B, from us, and A moved away from us. So what does it look like for us that D has done? Here, D stayed with C, and so it all moved over. C looked like it moved away an inch, and D moved over an inch from where it was. But when we include the expansion of space from C to D, D also moves another inch. And so, because the space between B and C and C and D are all expanding, looks like this rope is all expanding at all points, then in fact, D has moved away from us farther than C has and A has. I get that? And that would mean it would be, the light would be redshifted more and faster um, from that. Now, as I said, that's the space-time expanding. Galaxies can move around and they can actually be approaching us having blue-shifted light. And so Hubble found a, a range of these. He only had, you know, something like 20 galaxies to look at at the time, but then they kept, of course, growing from there. As they looked at this, so this is a ushered in a whole new era of astronomy where you're looking at galaxies and talking about the universe. Well, as we did, they started to discover some crazy stuff. And so let's find this. Some things we didn't know. Well, surprise, surprise, we don't know everything. Uh, we continue to explore. Let's talk about dark matter first. Uh, 1930, maybe start, started this uh, idea that there's something missing, that there's more stuff out there, we think, than we can see. And so by dark, what we mean by dark is not glowing at all, not giving off any light. Even I am glowing infrared. I'm not glowing like a light bulb, visible light. I'm glowing infrared, so is this pen, so is everything, so are you, we're glowing infrared. Things glow, and the hotter they are, the more they glow, the 
cooler the less they glow, but they still glow. We should be able to pick it up, certainly now. Uh, so somehow they don't seem to be glowing or we're not picking it up, okay? So it's dark matter or missing matter. Now there's a few possibilities, I'll just throw down here, what they could be. So the missing matter could be little small, smaller than atoms, some small bits, and they're called WIMPs. You can look that up if you want. They're, that stands for weakly interacting massive particles. Uh, so if you, if you care to look at that, this may be a little too much information. Don't just relax. This is an introduction. Or machos, which are massive, big things. So there could be really tiny things. There could be really large things out there that we're not picking up. There must be something there. Why? I'll tell you that in a second. The other possibility is quite different, and that's called MOND. Maybe we need a modification of Newtonian dynamics. Maybe something's different, and not only Newtonian, but we're talking about uh, Einstein as well. So maybe there's some, mod that's considered by most, I think at this time still, uh, to be less likely. But explore, explore. Why do we need to explore? What's going on? Well, you hear names like Oort. You're going to hear about the Oort cloud of comets later. Um, 1930, looking at stuff, and Zwicky, looking at stuff, and, and Vera Rubin, who had a, a long uh, career uh, in the 70s and piecing some things together. And um, what did they see? What did these folks see? And I'll let you get into more details. You don't need to know all, all of that right now. But they watched the galaxies. They looked at the motion of the galaxies. And they saw that there must be more gravity. It turns out that gravity is created by mass. Think of that sheet that I had, and I put that mass in it warped the space-time. Okay, that, that idea, if I had more mass, somehow it warps it more. We'll get into that in chapter 3 a bit. But there was missing mass. And so, when looking at a group of galaxies and their motion, they seemed to be moving in such a way that there wasn't enough stuff to hold them together. They're going too fast. There's, there's got to be something holding them together. And then, uh, also looking at the rotation of stars in a single galaxy, any one galaxy, looking at how that galaxy is spinning around, out there, or maybe galaxies in our group, right? The rate at which they're spinning around. It turns out that the stars out here are traveling so fast there shouldn't be enough gravity. They're, to hold it, there isn't enough mass. There isn't enough matter to hold it. And so we're looking out here, of course, from our solar system within our Milky Way galaxy, about halfway out. And we're looking at this and watching this, and we're using that idea of redshift, blue shift, breaking down the light as carefully as we can, and uh, finding out that there doesn't seem to be enough mass, enough stuff that we detect from their glow, uh, and there must be something missing whether it's little tiny bits, large bits, maybe our theories need to be modified, that's still being explored. There, there has been some pretty great progress here, so you might look at that, but I think it gets to be a bit overwhelming. Uh, Vera Rubin, uh, notably, she uh, never got the Nobel Prize, and a lot of us think that she really should have, but once a person dies, they don't get a Nobel Prize, and she just died, uh, I think it was this year, 2017, um, so that's kind of a sad story in the recognition of uh, a great scientist, a great astronomer in the history of astronomy. Now, so that's dark matter. There's missing stuff. That, but there, what is it? We don't know. But we got some ideas, and, and maybe we're making some, some great progress. Whenever something comes out and says, we found it, I always say, yeah, let's wait and see how that shakes out, because we got to check. What about dark energy? All right, dark energy. When we look at the universe expansion, which we talked about, using these tools, don't get overwhelmed. Just get a little taste. Craziest questions. 1998. There's something called a Type 1A supernova. Now, a supernova is when a very large star 
explodes. This happens a particular way. And it always explodes it the same way and gives off the same amount of light. So it's always the same. This is amazing. So you've heard about those Cepheid variables and the variable stars that blink. Well, from the rate at which they blink, you can get the luminosity, how much light they give off. You can look at how bright they look and figure out from how much light they're actually giving off and how they look. You know, light dims with distance. Don't worry. So we could figure out how far away. Since these all have the same luminosity, which had to be discovered, you find as many as you can. They're very useful. If you find them in different galaxies, the luminosity, how much light it gives off, gives the distance. Now, here's the deal. What was found? Well, the redshift gives how fast the thing is moving, the galaxy is moving away. And I'm going to cut it short here because I don't want to explode your minds, make your brain go supernova. But the discovery seems to say, still being looked at it, we'll still look at the data. Maybe they'll come out and say, oh, no, it's not. But right now, we're saying the universe has been expanding, and as it's been expanding, it's been expanding faster and faster. Why? I could just say why, or I could give my why a name. So why, there's a name, dark energy. But that's really a big question mark. What is it? Is it something? Is it, who knows? Is it Voldemort? Is, what is dark energy? And that's one of the, these are a couple of great puzzles. This is where we are in history. And of course, a hundred years from now, they'll look back on us and see what they've discovered. And, and uh, cool stuff. So the next video, we will talk about how our universe got to be the way it is in uh, simple terms. Okay, just to kind of give you a sense. And then after that, we'll go to chapter one, where we look up with our naked eyes and get back to our roots with our ancestors around the globe and start piecing together this puzzle and see how humans have come from just using our little eyes and our senses and our mind to eventually finding a scientific process to go deeper and develop better equipment and to see things that our eyes could never see and to think things our brains still have trouble thinking today and continue our exploration um, so we'll continue our journey, the human journey, uh, to know where we are in space-time.